I remind Mr. Rutledge and Mr. Dwayne that blood has been shed. Massachusetts blood. While we debate, our militia is left without munitions, without arms, without even the slightest encouragement. Mr. Dickinson of Pennsylvania. One colony cannot be allowed to take its sister colonies headlong into the maelstrom of war. Yeah. Parliament will be eager to call a halt to hostilities, as are we. They will seek conciliation. We must offer them an olive branch. Yeah. Yeah. I will, this assembly, consider a humble and dutiful petition be dispatched to His Majesty, one that includes a plain statement that the colony desires immediate negotiation and accommodation of these unhappy disputes and that we are willing to enter into measures to achieve that reconciliation. Second. Uh, Mr. Dickinson. The time for negotiation is past. The actions of the British Army at Lexington and Concord speak plainly enough. If we wish to regain our natural-born rights as Englishmen, and we must fight for them. I have looked for our rights in the laws of nature and can find them only in the laws of political society. I have looked for our rights in the constitution of the English government and found them there. Our rights have been violated, Mr. Adams. That is beyond dispute. We must provide a plan to convince Parliament to restore those rights. Do we wish to become aliens to the mother country? No! No, gentlemen. We must come to terms with the mother country. No doubt the same ship which carries forth our list of grievances will bring back their address. Mr. Dickinson, my wife and young children live on the main road to Boston, fewer than five miles from the full might of the British Empire. Should they sit and wait for Gage and his savages to rob them of their home, their possessions, their very lives? No, sir. Powder and artillery are the surest and most infallible conciliatory measures we can adopt. <laughs> possibility of peace, Mr. Adams, then I tell you, no, you have blood on your hands. Yes. And I tell you, Mr. Dickinson, that to hold out an olive branch to Britain is a measure of gross imbecility. If you New England men continue to oppose our measures of reconciliation, you will leave us no choice but to break off from you entirely and carry on the opposition in our own way. Yeah, yeah. I, I sit in judgment on no man's religion, Mr. Dickinson. But your Quaker sensibilities do us a gross disservice. It is one thing to turn the other cheek, but to lie down on the ground like a snake and crawl toward the seat of Mr. power Adam. in abject surrender. Well, that is quite another thing, sir. Mr. And Adam. I have no stomach for it, sir. Mr. No stomach at all. Here, here. Uh, we will exhaust. All peaceful approaches, Mr. Adams. And we will do it with or without the approbation of you and your Boston insurrectionists. Here, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mr. Dickinson's motion to send an olive branch petition to His Majesty has been made and seconded. We shall proceed to a vote. 